Hey, I'm Derek, it's me, Derek, and welcome to Stop Skeletons of Fighting. At this point, man, it feels like Resident Evil 4 is almost bigger than Resident Evil itself. There are still secrets being discovered. People are still making deconstructions and essays. Speedrunners still finding new ways to run this game. And oh, welcome to our fifth video just on Resident Evil 4. But it's not even just us, man. Capcom themselves can't get past RE4. The Switch port dropped only in 2019. There's a full VR version on the way, and that remake is still happening, I guess? Leon Kennedy's date with the president's daughter has only gotten more and more legendary since its lofty birth as a GameCube exclusive in January 2005. But why the hell am I talking about RE4 this time? Last year, we covered the many, many, many ports of RE4, but there was the one that got away the mobile port. And thanks to our amazing fans, I was finally able to get my hands on Resident Evil 4 for iPod, iPhone, iPad, and the elusive Brazilian wonder, the Zebo. Thanks to all the other people who offered to lend us their devices as well. Y'all are amazing. But why did I have to lean on my fans to finally play this port of Resident Evil 4? Well, because like Resident Evil Degeneration, which we talked about last time, Resident Evil 4 Mobile has been delisted and unavailable for years. That's right, while Resident Evil 4 is still being released today, there is one version, a very different and unique version, that has been forgotten. Welcome to Delisted, the show that spotlights digital games pulled from digital stores or abandoned by the march of time. And on this episode, we mourn the loss of Resident Evil 4 Mobile. Resident Evil 4 Mobile Edition has a strange and murky history and is often incorrectly lumped together with another Resident Evil Mobile heavy hitter, Degeneration. Kotaku got it wrong, Moby Games got it wrong, and shocker, we got it wrong. RE4 Mobile Edition looks like a PlayStation 1 demake, which is fitting because it was apparently originally developed for the Nokia N-Gage. Wrong! Super wrong! Damn! Okay, alright. So. Resident Evil 4 Mobile came out before Degeneration was even a glimmer in Capcom's eye way back in February 2008. Feast your eyes on this! Here it is, the original version of Resident Evil 4 Mobile. Now, because it was released only in Japan on flip phones using the Brew operating system, it's hard to find a whole lot of details about it on the English-speaking web. There's not even a whole lot of video footage out there, but we did find a video that was uploaded in February 2008. Look at this! Ah. Sometimes I miss the potato camera days of YouTube. Brew, by the way, that's B-R-E-W, Brew, is an operating system made by Qualcomm, a US multinational corporation better known for being a cellular network patent troll slash chipset slinger than a software company. Which is one way of saying that Brew was used by a few tech companies like AT&T and Verizon in particular, but it was not an operating system known for being particularly sexy or high tech. That Qualcomm connection will be important in a minute, but for now, all you need to know is that this means that Resident Evil 4 Mobile predates this, 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 and even this, the Engage 2.0 store. It has nothing to do with Resident Evil degeneration at all. Besides, of course, you know, also being based on Resident Evil 4. They were even made on different engines and by different companies entirely. But I understand why this happened. Really, the confusion comes from the fact that both of these games were ported internationally to iOS within a few months of each other in the summer of 2009. And of course, they look and play very similarly. I mean, the Degeneration movie is canonically Resident Evil 4.5, and that is not a bad way to describe the Degeneration game. But that means Degeneration was a port of a six-month-old Engage 2.0 game, and Resident Evil 4 Mobile was a port of a year-and-a-half-old Japanese flip phone port of a four-and-a-half-year-old GameCube game. So everybody got that? We all clear? I hope so, because now it is time to talk about the game itself. And naturally, the Japanese flip phone version should be where we start. I mean, it is the original version, after all. But I do not have a Japanese flip phone. I mean, I could probably emulate one, but I didn't even bother to try, because I have the greatest fans in the world, and I have access to something even better. A Zebo and Resident Evil 4 Zebo Edition is in fact just a port of the Brew Flip Phone original. Yeah, yeah, for you hardcore punching weight heads, I know you've been waiting for this one for a while, we've been teasing it for months. Sorry to keep you waiting, but let's finally get to it. The Zebo is a Brazilian console that ran on Qualcomm's Brew OS. To be reductive, it was a home console full of cell phone games. It's something made possible only by Brazil's complicated economic policies that we will dive much deeper into in a passportum that is coming very, very, very soon. 
But just know that Brazil's relationship with video games is weird. But even for Brazil, the Zeebo was weird. Because it wasn't just a mobile games console, it was a digital-only console that managed to snag games for the most random assortment of legacy franchises. Need for Speed, Quake, Double Dragon, Crash Bandicoot, just to name a few. But what that means is everything was lost when Zeebo's servers were shut down after only two years on the market. Yes, shocker, I know. But of course Capcom was down to clown. Really, in terms of extremely popular games on extremely obscure systems, Capcom takes the gold with Resident Evil 2 Gamecom and Resident Evil 4 Zeebo. Man, I miss weird Capcom. Resident Evil 4 Zeebo Edition first graced this earth in August 2009. Now there's a lot to talk about, but we gotta start with what you are looking at right now. One benefit of being a straight port of a 2008 flip phone game is, well, it looks about as good as you'd expect a 2008 cell phone game would look blown up on a TV. Ugly is certainly one way to describe it, but it still has a charm I absolutely adore. It looks like a fan-made PS1 demake with an aesthetic that I think is genuinely unsettling at times. Oh yeah, and everybody is blue. What's going on with that? This is some kind of bizarre Brazilian blueberry agenda. Do not give the Zeebo too much credit here. The enemies are all blue dabadi and the Japanese flip phone version as well. It's not Brazilian censorship, it's Capcom doing the bare minimum, a trend we will see throughout this video. Though the graphic content is also toned down, there's no headshots, except for when the plagas pop, uh, there's not really any blood, but that's pretty similar to the censorship in the Japanese console versions of Resident Evil 4. I mean, Japan still tones down Resident Evil games to this day, so leave Brazil alone, this game was playing it safe for Japan. Ooh, but we get to see the Brew exclusive intro! Instead of a sizzle reel of cinematics from the game, we get this beautifully stilted movie of villagers swarming Leon. And oh god, it's glorious. But that's not even the best part. Are you ready for the worst music you've maybe ever heard in your life? Okay, this song is weird, but once you realize it's trying to mimic this song... Tell your friends it's from the Resident Evil Director's Cut and see if they even notice. And the rest of the soundtrack is just as good, slash is not much better. It is genuinely some of the worst music I've ever heard. I have to upload it somewhere. The world needs to hear this stuff. But now it is an accomplishment, no matter how compromised, to fit a stupidly massive game like Resident Evil 4 into a dinky 2008 flip phone slash whatever the Zeebo is. This is achieved by making a sort of greatest hits package, splitting the campaign into 12 bite-sized missions, six in the village and six in the castle. But what this means is this game doesn't even go to the island, it just abruptly stops after the fight with Salazar's right hand. On top of that, levels are very brief. The big fight in the cabin, for example, is an entire level. And by the way, that's the last level of the village because poof, after that you take a gigantic leap to the castle, dodging catapults. You miss so much between missions. In fact, sometimes you miss stuff in missions. Later, when you're defending Ashley from above, there is no Ashley solo part. Okay, if you're gonna give us the Japanese censorship, why don't you also give us the Japanese exclusive classic camera Ashley section? I mean, hey, there are plenty of fixed camera Resident Evil cell phone games. Okay, I'm half joking, it's pretty obvious this game wasn't given the budget or time to make it really special like that. Except it is kind of special. And this leads me into what is actually the most meaningful change in Resident Evil 4 Mobile, the balance. It is completely different. For example, there is now only the base pistol and base shotgun, kind of combining all the regular game's pistols and shotguns into one firearm. So the pistol now has 22 total upgrades for a total of 308,000 bucks, as opposed to only 15 upgrades for a grand total of 198,000 bucks in the original. But it can be upgraded to pierce enemies and can get a gigantic clip. Same goes for the shotgun, which is nearly twice as expensive to fully upgrade, but becomes way more powerful. But enemies do not drop that much more money, and since levels are so short, there's just fewer enemies, period. At first I ran through campaign levels one after another and quickly found myself struggling with cash and getting outclassed. I've never had this much trouble on the first blind claw guy in the castle. And then in the next mission, you gotta fight two of them. Now thankfully you can buy ammo from the merchant, and pretty cheap too, 
But if you're not upgrading your firearms, you are just pissing away that money and ammo. But as a bonus, as you finish campaign levels, you unlock mercenary missions. And I'm a dummy, because the first time through, I did not even bother with the mercenary missions because I didn't realize the game incentivizes you to play each mission as you unlock them with fat stacks of cash. Now you can replay campaign levels and farm money and treasure there. The chainsaw on the first village level still always drops a ruby, but the mercenary missions will get you money way faster. And really, the mercenary missions are where this port stops being a neat curio and starts being a unique take on Resident Evil 4. You play as Leon in all of them, so it is technically a mercenary mode, by the way. And instead of timed high score challenges, these mercenary missions are little scenario challenges. Each mission has a set special loadout and objective. It still reuses levels from the campaign, but for example here, you have to guide Ashley through the ravine, except with fog. RE4 is back, in fog form. Or this village level, except now it's all chainsaw guys. Or don't blow up Ashley in the all mine thrower level. And there are 24 of these, man. The better you do with them, the more you are rewarded with money that you then spend on the main campaign. And this is really how you go about upgrading Leon for the later levels. I actually kind of broke the game by redoing missions over and over and grinding out them sweet merchant bucks. In one really early Merc mission, you can grind out 30,000 bucks in just three minutes. I spammed this level and eventually optimized my run to almost 40,000, which is big money. Just 10 runs of this, less than 45 minutes, and you'll have enough to fully upgrade the handgun, which just cuts through most non-boss enemies. The problem is though, this turns the game into a grind, and while this grind is a fine fit for something portable like, I don't know, the cell phone it was made for, it is not the greatest fit for a system tethered to a television. RE4 Mobile is a unique RE4 experience, but one that was made with portability in mind, which makes the Zebo port all the more awkward. The Zebo itself was not long for this world, and I'm guessing this game didn't exactly move the sales needle. But you know what was a sales juggernaut in the late 2000s? Apple and its indomitable, indomitable App Store. Juggernaut. Like I mentioned earlier, Capcom actually ported Resident Evil 4 Mobile to iOS in the summer of 2009. It actually came out just two weeks before the Zebo port. But despite being released quite close to each other, there are some big differences. First off, iPhone and iPad Touch look and run a whole heck of a lot better. I mean, it's not great. It's sort of like the PS1 D-Make team suddenly got themselves a better development rig. The enemies are now their appropriately fleshy toned selves, though the hooded dudes in the castle are still blue if you look close enough. This version is also less gory, you know, no blood, no chainsaw decapitations. The Zebo version had some pretty bad slowdown, and that is gone on iOS. But you still never see more than five enemies ever. And the AI has not improved much either. You still often see enemies walking away from you and then very slowly turning around to come and get you. The biggest thing for me was the sound. Instead of recreating the music, the iOS versions just have the songs straight from the game. Now, it's almost not even fair to compare the Zebo because iPhones and iPods, those devices were built with storage in mind, so adding a couple of MP3s must have been no problem. Near as I can tell, they just took the music from the console version and shoved it in there, which is great or disappointing, depending on your personal alignment chart. Okay, but the actual biggest change between these versions is the controls. We on smartphones now, buddy, which means it is welcome to touchscreensville. Now, Resident Evil 4 is one of the most polished and well-controlling video games of all time, perfectly calibrated for a GameCube controller, or a PS2 controller, or a Wiimote, or a keyboard, or an Xbox, or PlayStation, you get the point. You can probably imagine, though, how well all this would go down on a tiny old-school iPhone touchscreen. I'm using an iPhone 4S here, and I guess they are about as good as they can be. They get the job done. I was shocked Ashley wasn't more of a problem to cart around, but double tapping down to do a 180 was very tough to do reliably. The Zebos controller, on the other hand, while absolutely nothing to write home about, like what is going on with these analog sticks being this close together, I think I still prefer it to the iOS's touch situation. I mean, I'll tell you one thing the Zebo has got, a reload button. I'm reloading. I swear I'm reloading, this is how you do it. Reloading so much. On iOS, you have to shake to reload. Shake the whole device just to reload. All these on-screen buttons, all this screen real estate, but they drew the line at reloading. Like there are a dozen presets for buttons, but not once can you add a reload button on the screen. So crank up that sensitivity, man. And it's actually not too bad for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Those are small devices, they fit in your hand. But I felt like such an idiot shake, swinging shake, my shake, massive shake. iPad 2 around. You know how long Resident Evil 4 is? You know how many times I gotta reload in this game? Man, that's called reps, baby. That's gains. 
Maybe this only bothers me because it made capturing footage a pain. I actually knocked out the cord once. Chainsaw guy was coming at me and I just shook too much and <laughs> the damn thing popped out. Though it makes me wonder why they didn't just go full tilt and add on full motion control aiming. I mean, I don't actually wonder uh, because I know it would have cost Capcom too much money. And again, they are about doing the bare minimum for these mobile ports. But this was an out of character moment of them overachieving. Like, they somehow found a way to simultaneously overachieve and underachieve. Well done, Capcom. Another way Capcom made RE4 fit under these phones is scaling cutscenes down to annotated slideshows. But wow, 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 wow. I cannot speak for the translation in the Zebo version because I do not speak Portuguese, but I have a feeling that it wasn't great because the English iOS translation is amazingly bad, impressively atrocious. Plus, it'll also give you whiplash. The character dialogue is taken from the main game verbatim, but the descriptive text is totally original and it makes the first Resident Evil look like Shakespeare. For fun, and I'm all about fun, here is a normal RE4 cutscene with the RE4 mobile descriptive dialogue. In an abandoned house, there is a tied up man who seems to need help. Village Chief Mandez captures and ties up Leon. Leon and the man are transported to a highly secured valley. Leon tries to take out the photograph from his back pocket. The man had overheard a conversation and the girl is supposedly in the church. As Louise talks, Ganados armed with axes approach the two men. Leon uses the Ganados' axe to his advantage to cut the chains on his wrists. Now free of the chains, Leon takes on the Ganados who were attacking him. However, Luis has already fled the scene. And honestly, that's not even the worst of it. The worst of it is the merchant's dialogue. Now a few pieces of VO made it in. Welcome. But man, who could forget classic merchant lines like, what do you want to buy? You don't have enough money. What do you want to sell? Like, like, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the merchant's dialogue is one of the most legendary things about Resident Evil 4. How does this happen? It is utter blasphemy, and I can't imagine how this is allowed to happen, but it is clear that Capcom never cared as none of this dialogue, none of it was ever patched or updated. Again, it is, it is kind of impressive. Come back any time. But any way you cut it, even with the touch controls, the awkward reloading, the worst localization I've ever maybe seen, for what it is, RE4 Mobile works on mobile. I mean, yeah, there's the Switch port, I know, but this is designed to be a one to two minute Resident Evil 4 snack break. Grind on a mission here, try and improve a run on a mercenary mission there. No joke, I spent one whole weekend farming and mercenary missions between chores and errands, and by Sunday night, I had gotten my pistol, shotgun, and rifle maxed out. I rolled through campaign levels like I was a god. I'm a sucker for Resident Evil 4, and it was awesome to have a little fix whenever I wanted, even if it is a compromised, downgraded touchscreen port. For all its shortcomings, they reshaped it to lean into the fact that it's, well, it's a cell phone game. Straight up, every RE4 fan should be able to try this out because it is a unique and fun take on this game we've played hundreds of times. Still a shame they didn't patch in a better script, though. And speaking of patches, you betcha there were patches. Remember, this happened in the late 2000s as cell phone gaming was really kicking into high gear. Hey, it's Infinity Blade, another delisted iPhone game. I mean, this was back when Apple still had an iPod Touch. So RE4 Mobile became a sort of wrong place, wrong time guinea pig for Capcom's mobile division. Patches and DLC are of course common for mobile games today, but for Resident Evil 4 Mobile, this is where things start to get kind of messy and sad. So before you run off to eBay to buy old iPhones, there's something you should know first. All I talked about so far has been just the bare version of Resident Evil 4 Mobile. Don't forget, Capcom kind of missed the boat with the Apple App Store. Resident Evil Degeneration was at first an Engage 2.0 exclusive, and then RE4 went to brew? Heads had to have been rolling back at the home office. Capcom quickly released these games onto iOS in summer 09, and then things went quiet. That is, until the iPad entered the picture. And you might forget this, but after how zeitgeist defining both the iPod and iPhone were, when Apple announced the iPad, people were sure it was going to happen again. Capcom could not miss another event like this. So they started tinkering. In the months before the iPad launched, they released a super cheap version called Resident Evil 4 Lite for beginners. 
It was an option to piecemeal the campaign, buying as much as you want, even though it sometimes might have been altogether more expensive than just getting the full game. And then in April 2010, when the iPad dropped, Capcom was ready with Resident Evil 4 HD as a launch title. Now, I'm saying that like it's something exciting, but actually it's pretty much the same as all the other versions. It does look better, but I think HD is a bit of a reach. Also in April 2010, Resident Evil 4 Mobile got a huge update. A new training level, five total difficulties, a coin shoot minigame, and a big Resident Evil history section. And that was just the start between August and December 2010. RE4 Mobile would get more DLC in the form of a few cheats, and campaign chapters 13 through 22, and mercenary missions 25 through 44. They actually did it! They finished the game! I mean, these extra levels are also super short like the rest, and it, that is a hell of a package. That is a lot of game to grind through. And overall, you are still missing huge chunks of the game, but this extra set of levels has choice major highlights like the Salazar fight, the Krauser fight, and a few levels with the Regenerators. The incredibly sad thing is that these missions were never brought over to the Zebo or Brew original as far as I know. I found footage of someone playing the flip phone version and a quick scroll through the menu shows only 12, not 22 missions. And maybe Capcom never intended on finishing this game until the iPad spurred them into action. It certainly looks that way. Actually, maybe not, because even though all this new DLC was released after the iPad, none of it actually came to the iPad version. I can only assume that's why RE4 Mobile was rebranded RE4 Platinum and RE4 iPad just stayed RE4 iPad Edition. My guess is that it would have been too much work to also render, you know, the Krauser fight in HD, so they just didn't bother. But here we are, recommending you this game that is hard enough to get already, and letting you know that it is even harder to get complete. The good news is, uh, the two iPod touches and the iPhone 4S lens to us all have the full campaign, so everyone who helped us out, uh, lucked out. That means these are all probably the Platinum Edition that had the full campaign by default. But it's still possible that there are devices out there without the full campaign. I mean, with that in mind, it's probably easiest just to jailbreak an old device instead. And the weirdness does not stop there. RE4 Mobile eventually found its way to Android as a Samsung Galaxy Store exclusive in 2013. Dude, that makes the Android port a five-year-old flip phone port of an eight-year-old GameCube game. It's like Steve Ballmer running on stage and announcing the brand new 2013 Windows beeper. For the record, it was basically the same as the iOS versions. It had all the DLC because I believe at a certain point Capcom only ever sold the complete platinum version, but not for long because this is delisted. Digital games can only stick around for so long. Let's be honest here. These versions of Resident Evil 4 were not built to last. Mobile tech was rapidly evolving and games that traced their roots back to flip phones looked more and more primitive by the day. But the various versions all sailed off to Valhalla at different times. As far as the original Japanese brew version, Capcom pulled a majority of its brew games at the end of March 2014, though weirdly you could still buy them in Australia for a while. The Zebo itself was pulled from online support way earlier, all the way back in 2011, just over two years after the console launched. But there's a much bigger story with that whole thing, and we are working on a past mortem as we speak, sit tight. The cause of death for the iOS version would come as part of a far larger or devastating marketplace purge. As Apple continued to update their operating system, backwards compatibility was kicked to the curb with every successive iteration of iOS. The first signs of trouble for legacy apps came in 2014's iOS 8, which wreaked havoc on a range of older software. The iOS version wasn't updated past 2011, so I'm willing to bet that new players would have had some issues. But the game wasn't actually delisted just yet. Instead, it got a boilerplate disclaimer to the store page that functionality is not guaranteed on devices that are updated to iOS 8. Wow, reassuring. I do know that it was live as late as Halloween 2014, at least the iPad version was on sale. It could have quietly disappeared after that, or maybe it stayed up until the transition to iOS 11 in 2017, which was the final death rattle for 32-bit apps on Apple iOS. But then again, Capcom cared so little about this port that I think it's just as likely they forgot about it. I mean, I was able to pick up the 2011 port of Devil May Cry 4 as late as 2020. It's possible it was left up for a while for people who hadn't fully upgraded to iOS 11 yet. As for the Android port, I think it was already basically DOA when it launched so late and as a Samsung Galaxy Store exclusive. Yuck. It never made it out of there and the fact that I couldn't find a single headline about its delisting says enough. The lack of historical archival is a shame, of course, but it's hard to really blame them. 
As sad as I am that these games are delisted, it's crazy to me that they haven't been replaced. Think about this, Resident Evil 4, one of the most influential and popular games of all time, has been officially mined for profit by Capcom across every format that could feasibly play it. However, here stood a version of the game that was designed to take with you on the go, an extremely unique version for fans to appreciate. But when Capcom felt it had served its purpose, they let these versions go without so much as a second thought and never replaced them. But maybe that's just how the mobile market has settled. RE4 Switch? Yes! iPhone 13? No! And of course, bringing RE4 Mobile as well as Degeneration to modern phones would be no simple task. Still, it's a shame they are not more widely, legally, available to the Resident Evil community, even for a few dollars more. If there are any other digital games that have been pulled from stores or abandoned by the march of time that you would like to see in a future episode of Delisted, let me know in the comments below. I say this in every episode that this show would not be possible without other supporters, but this show in particular absolutely would not be possible without Rockman KB, Jace, and Greg, and all our Brazilian fans who reached out. Uh, we're sorry if we didn't get back to you. We tried to get back to every single one of you. If we missed you, this is our chance to say thank you for reaching out. Uh, of course, this show is supported by all of our friends on Patreon. All these people here, they make this show possible and you can join their ranks too. Hey, but if you don't want to do that, just tell a friend. Next time somebody asks, man, what's the funnest and dumbest YouTube channel? Tell them about Stop Skeletons and Fighting. Give us a like, give us a sub. Um, if you want more Zebo content, definitely hit that subscribe button because more Zebo content come. What are, what are the YouTube channels going to be giving you like multiple Zebo videos? Uncle Derek and Producer Grace. That's me. That's what's happening. So hold on to your butts. Stay powerful because we got this. Coming back real soon. Take care.